listeners are as important as our guests. Join in on the conversation. 504-341-8255. The New Orleans Talk Network. What is New Orleans Talk Network? It's today's hottest topics with an added flair. You get ready because the conversation will be hot and better yet mobile. Download the New Orleans Talk Network app of Wednesday morning, August the 15th, the Ides of August. Love that little introductory music and our great background. Uh, as you see, we're doing artist review today. Now, normally we do chef's chat uh, worldwide, but as we said, during the summer, it's very hard to get, and sometimes the connections are bad on our long distance, but we're going to keep trying. But we're doing, um, the whole idea was bringing artist reviews for these situations where we, uh, either an artist, uh, we don't have a guest, or we have something that we want to do as well. In fact, this week we're doing back-to-back -back artist review. Next week as well will not be No Your Nonprofit, and we'll explain that if we have time at the end of the show. But you all are really in for a treat because we have a double feature of artists. Uh, as you know, this week, if, we, if you've seen artist review, we bring in artists from uh, around the globe, um, been specializing in alternating between New Orleans and outside, inside the country, though. And today we have a gentleman from Florida who's going to be presenting his work. And the good thing we want to remind you about this, and we'll explain that during the show, is that you can buy, if you like any of these pieces, you can call in or text in to Mike and uh, make the selection of the piece you want. And then we'll also, we're going to tell you how much they cost. There's a fixed cost. We've worked out a situation so far with our first, these two artists. So it's a standard fee for whether you want to print or an original, et cetera. So we'll talk about that uh, during the show. And the key there is you do have the ability to call in or text in and buy. Now, one last thing in that regard is that, you know, we have this new crazy number. Where it came from, who knows, but uh, doesn't relate at all to New Orleans. So our standard number, even though you hear the lady with the intro, is no longer the one that's featured. So it's a, And it's a difficult one because it is, there's no rhyme or reason, no area codes. I'm going to give it to you. It's going to show on the screen though, during the day to help you understand if you want to call in to talk to the artist or to buy something or text. The area code is 563. Uh, the exchange is 999, and the number is 1808. Very difficult, and I apologize for that, and I wish our crew could do a better job of coming up with numbers. Anyway, let's move on. As we mentioned, we're having a guest, and our artist is from Florida. I'm not sure exactly where, but hopefully he'll tell us. So we want to welcome to the show Gabriel Dunez. Good morning, Gabriel. Just good morning, come, just good morning, come, good morning, come, good morning. You got a little echo there. Hopefully, we're going to improve that. Let's see if we're going to get. Uh, can you hear us there, Gabriel? Yes, I can hear everything. Okay, great. Well, that's good. We got that under control. That's the key. All right. Why don't you tell the audience? I told them you're in Florida, but I didn't know which city. Where Whereabouts are you located in Florida? I'm in Plantation. And maybe for those who do, don't only know the big cities, where would Plantation be? It's a great name, a, but I, I don't know Broward, where it is. Like Broward I, County. All right, give us a little. Give us a big city that we might know a little bit more. You know, Plantation might be a large city. Probably like Fort Lauderdale, Las Olas. Ah, there you go. So it's how far from Fort Lauderdale? About. Uh, maybe like twenty minutes. Maybe. Okay. So we've got an idea now where you are, what part of the state you're in. Great, great. All right, tell us. Uh, have you been there a long time? Tell us a little bit how you got there, and uh, a little bit about yourself before we start talking about your work. Well, I actually grew up in, uh, I was born in Hialeah, Florida. Okay. Uh, so. 
That's where the right. Race. That's where the racetrack is, huh? Yeah, we we have a lot of casinos and yeah. right. Good. And then when did you come to Plantation? Um, actually, around when I was like around five or six years old, we moved to Miramar. Okay. And Miramar was like a little bit closer, starting to go more more north. So, um, I've been living in Plantation for about maybe like eight years now. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, good. You're giving them some popularity this morning because uh, they, I hate to say it, but I don't think their Department of Tourism does a good job with regarding the getting the word out of uh, visiting or living in Plantation. So uh, you can be their spokesman. You'll do double duty today, not only for yourself, but also for the city that you're representing, okay? Yeah, it's definitely more quiet up here. <laughs> Okay, uh, why don't you tell us the most important thing they want to hear, as everyone does, is when did you first get interested or notice you had an interest in any form of art, and what was that about? I mean, <coughs> I always really kind of liked art and, like, appreciated it because, you know, my father and my sister, they're both artists. They oh. They both do a lot of um, painting, and my dad's really always liked, like, Dali and those kind of right. painters. I've always been very intrigued, but it seemed like it's very, like a very difficult form of art, you know? So I, I kind of like colors and I started maybe like when I was, I started, honestly started like maybe like five years ago. Okay. You know, working really hard on this. But when I was younger, I always liked to play around more than, you know, just like more for fun, fun all the time. Sure, sure. We all do that as our creativity comes out as children, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, good, good. But you've been seriously at it for about five years, you say? Yes. Excellent. Well, I think the people are going to be impressed I was. And now that you've explained, I didn't. you didn't tell me, or I didn't ask, really, that your familial relationships are so in-depth in, in with art as well. So certainly that would uh, be a big influence on you, not only to do it, but also at least to appreciate it. And I think, as I've kind of told you this, I, I have a problem of categorizing work, which, you know, maybe profiling or whatever, which is, of course, a terrible term to use. But uh, people, a lot of artists go through different periods. I think um, that was the term. I think uh, Picasso was had, like had his blue period. Uh, so there would be things where as a person, as an artist, uh, whether you're a writer or anything, you go through different sessions or seasons or periods where your influence or your direction is one way, and it might be totally opposite or just uh, slightly different. And then after a while, as you start maturing and looking at things, and, and I'm not saying that's happened to you because I think probably most of your work is in, obviously in five years, that's not really a, a long history to have a portfolio that you are because you are very prolific in it. But you do have different styles. And so I've kind of, you know, given them two or three style categories, and hopefully I've asked that you tolerate my categorization and not take any offense there. But it's easier for me, and hopefully and when I explain it to the audience, those parts, they'll understand it as well. Um, anything else you want to talk about yourself before we... We have to take a morning break, as I told you before, and then when we come back, we're going to hit it hard and start looking at... Uh, I think you sent us 10, 20 pieces, so that's great. Anything else you want to tell us about yourself before we... Uh, Move into your work. Uh, not really much. Uh, my I like to sometimes go boxing on the side, and I love wow, to that's really about <laughs> about it. <laughs> now, most of your work is um, most of your originals are acrylics or well, pencil, or pastel. What do you? What is your major what I media? Do on canvas. Uh, my canvas work is always acrylics. Acrylics. Like whenever I do it on pa on paper, sometimes I'll do acrylic. But mainly it's markers, so I'll use like Prismacolor, got it. Um, Sharpie, anything that's a pen, I'll try to use. Got it, got it. Well, that's good. That gives people an idea because very few people, uh, I mean, they do experiment with different things. Like uh, they might do oil on a few pieces, but they gravitate to a certain medium and they kind of stay with that. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll dabble in watercolor and all, but a watercolorist is usually a pure, purist that they stay in watercolor most of their lives. But at the same time, it's good to try different genres and see how it affects your, you know, how you translate it to see if it is something you're satisfied with. 
But I, I figured as much that most of yours was cr cr acrylics and or some pastels or pencils and stuff like that. So people will know what they're in for. But they're going to be seeing a, a lot of stuff when we throw it at them. But we need to take our first morning break. And when we come back, we'll uh, take a look at Gabriel Nunes' work all the way from Plantation, Florida. Enjoy the commercials. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson. And can you believe that it has been one year since Horizons with Meet the World Image Solutions hit your airwaves? We have interviewed authors, entrepreneurs, playwrights, musicians, and everyone in between, all to bring you the best of literary conversation. And we plan to do it again this year, but only better. So join us right here in the Literary Lounge each Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time right here on the New Orleans Talk Network. See you there. Hi, I'm Prophetess Charlene Duforce. And I'm Bishop Carol Duforce Sr. And we're from Living Witnesses Ministries. And we also uh, have a program on, on the internet uh, called Living by the Word Daily. And we're seen every Wednesday from 11 a.m. to 12 noon Central Time on the New Orleans Talk Network. And we would like to invite you to tune in with us every Wednesday morning again 11 to 12 noon, Central Daylight Time. Please join us as we teach the Word of God. Thank you, and God bless. God bless you. We're back. Talk What You Know returns on Wednesday mornings at 8 a.m. We got a brand new co-host by the name of Bob B. And hey, that's me. Also, we got some new features. We're going to be giving away have a weekly raffle of prizes. Uh, there are multiple ways for you to win and there's a bevy of prizes. So we need you to come on back, join us on Wednesday mornings at 8 o'clock for Talk What You Know on the New Orleans Talk Network. Okay, welcome back. Uh, you're with Bob B. and uh, Gabriel Nunez, our artist du jour. Uh, and even though, Gabriel, I said we're going to jump into your work, I think what I need to do is, first of all, talk about, rather than wait to the end, because if people get interested, uh, they can call and text in a piece, and they'll know what they're going to pay for instead of having to ask Mike and stuff like that. So let's do two things. One is that Gabriel, when he goes over each piece, He's been very fortunate and delightful that he titles each of his piece, which to me is very impressive because it customizes, it makes it more yours as opposed to, well, that's just uh, that particular one. So uh, you'll have a name up front, with just like a pet, you can change it if you like, but you'll know what the artist thought about it when he was actually creating the piece. Uh, he also will give you the size of the original. Presumably most of those are in canvas and the price of the original if it's still available. If it's not available, he'll either say it's sold or just keep quiet about it. But Gabriel, as a couple of other artists have done, has agreed to do prints for us. Uh, and what happens there is that we will give you three choices and three price ranges to, if you would like to get any of these pieces that you see today um, on uh, as a print as opposed to the original whether it's budgetary or whatever reasons a lot of people just collect prints especially today with the economy we understand prints are always obviously less expensive than an original piece um, now mike's going to put up how you can do that in there uh, there's a schedule and how you pay for it so we're going to go over that real quickly and then we're going to jump into the work uh, i'm hoping he's got that schedule ready um, what it is is that uh, <clears throat> we have three ways in which you can do a print if you look on that one is and you see the prices the twenty dollars the twenty dollar is actually a print on paper now when we say paper we don't need newspaper what we've done is there are three alternatives we've actually given you a good card stock we found that the matte m-a-t-t-e if you know not a shiny card stock does extremely well for the prints and your print size will be all the same on these, predominantly 11 
by 17, which is a very nice size because we've seen a lot of the other printers uh, that are available that do starting much smaller, like 5 by 5s 8 by 8s and uh, our price is really very, very good with regard to that particular size. So 11 by 17 print on matte cardstock is $20, okay, pretty cheap. The $50 range is if you want it on canvas. The original can be transferred to canvas just like the original is, but it is a print. So it is less expensive than the original, and that's $50. And then lastly, the $100 would be one that would actually be framed for you, would actually include a frame. And uh, we work with you on that with regard to some reasonable. Obviously, you're not going to be getting some big gold leaf frame. It's going to be, and you'll see a lot of his work, it's contemporary anyway. So you want to go something with a metal, plain, uh, simple frame or wood like that. And we can work that out once we do it if you do want the print on it. But if, when you see his normal prices, you're going to say, well, why would I want a print uh, print frame on canvas when I can get his original work on canvas and either frame it myself or even with his frame, some of his is framed. Okay, and you can pay either by uh, personal check, cashier's check is preferred, or PayPal through my name. Uh, the address that was on that chart is where you would send those checks. 1830 Jenna, New Orleans, Louisiana, 70115, addressed to me, Bob Bockelman, and, and payable to Bob Bockelman. I'll put it in and then take care of it send him the money and, and get the stuff done for you. So there we go. That's it in a nutshell. We'll review that if we have time at the end. Now, uh, Gabriel, welcome back. We're going to go ahead and take a look at your first painting. And as uh, Michael gets that flipped up, you can start talking. Tell us exactly the title and the uh, size, etc. Anything <coughs> inspires you. Let's take a look at your first uh, painting here. Let's see if we've got it. All right. Now, and I'm going to make my two cents worth. Hopefully, you won't get offended. Go ahead and tell us about this number one. Gabriel? Hello? Yeah. Um, We're on your first painting. Can you tell us a little bit about it? All right. Well, that one, I gave it the name, like, Wacky Worlds, kind of. Rock and Roll? Wow, well, Wacky Worlds. Oh, Wacky like. Worlds. Sorry, we had a bad connection. <laughs> what? Okay. That's a cool one. And... Uh, what are we using on here? A lot of these will be like this. Tell us what, what this is on acrylic. What size? Well, this one actually, this one I used uh, markers and I use like little, like the, the really small pens. Okay. To like to do this one. And this one's actually a 18 by 16 inch. 18 and by what? 18 by 16 inch. Ah, that's a, that's a big one. And that's on paper or canvas? That's actually on paper, and it. Uh, I actually give that one with a frame. Okay, and so what if someone wanted that original of Wacky World? What would that cost you? I'm only charging a hundred. A hundred. So you see, folks, very real. That's eighteen by sixteen on canvas. Is that right? Yes. Oh, uh, it's on a uh, paper. On oh, paper. paper. Okay. And what type of paper do you use? Do you know? Uh, I use I. It varies. I always use different ones. Okay. Well, that's all right. That's all right. But the important thing there, folks, remember, you got our print prices, and for $100, you can have an original, and it was called Wacky World. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make my comment on the category or the next one because it's sim somewhat similar to the first one. Let's take a look at number two because we've got to move along with all my long-windedness. Let's see what number two looks like. Michael? All right, is it up? Oh, I think, is it up there now? I see it. Uh, let's go ahead. What Do we have a title for this one? Uh, I called it Levels Through Dimensions. Uh, kind of like each color hops through like a, like a different dimension, kind of. Uh-huh. All right, so and again. It's like a different color to like the different world. Okay, and then the size and the um, media that this is on. It's actually a paper, and it's uh, 17 by 14 inch. So it's a little, little slightly different than the first one, 14 by 17. And what is the asking price on the original? I was asking 100 for that. Uh, 100 again, and again, folks, if you wanted to print, 20 on the matte paper, 50 on canvas, 100 if you wanted framed. Now I'm gonna make my real quick comments on the first two people you might notice have got these great pastel colors, and most of his. Objects are not necessarily all geometrical shaped, but they're um, 
confined by almost like the marker, the black marker, sometimes darker, sometimes lighter. And there's a famous, very famous impressionist painter it's called Mondrian, who does mainly linear black uh, marked outline of different rectangles with the beautiful bright primal colors. So this caught my mind as being the opposite, being in pastels. But all right, so we've got our second one. Now the third one is going to knock your socks off, folks. Where do you see the colors and all in this one? Can we bring that one up and tell us about this, my, uh, Gabriel? Number three. It's the taking over the, the universe. Oh, you got to repeat that. You broke up. Taking over what? Oh, no, no. That one is, um, that one's when worlds meet. I kind of made it like, it's like planets around, but like connecting to the center. Ah, when worlds meet. Okay. And how about what, what size and what is this? What kind of media is the original? Um, this one is a 12 by nine inch. It's actually marker on paper. Well, I tell you folks, to me, this looks like a magnificent, we're very fam very religious here in New Orleans Catholics. We have a lot of churches and a lot of old cathedrals that have magnificent stained glass windows. Now, this is not a religious object per se that we're in the topic with the world's, but the colors and, and the shaping. This could easily pass for a stained glass window. So whether you're an older folk like myself and just appreciate those magnificent historians, hey, artisans, or, or contemporary, and it's contemporary design, but wow, what a bunch of color and pop. This would do great on every wall. And you said, what was the price and size on this one? Uh, I'm asking 50. 50, and it's on paper? Uh, 50, and yeah, it's on paper, 12 by 9 inch. Well, okay, for 12 uh, by 9, uh, 9 by 20. Now, you, you can get an 11 by 17 on cardstock for 20, or you can get it on canvas, 11 by 17 for 50. Or you can buy his original which he just mentioned the size, on paper for 50 as well. So what bargains is this? And it's called When Worlds Collide. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So far, that one's really knocking my socks off. Beautiful. Let's move on, though. Cause we Bob, can, can, I, can I interrupt you for a second? Surely. That's Mike. Uh, someone named Lawrence has just bought that uh, painting. Someone uh, has bought it? Um, Lawrence. What, what, I, I missed the name. What was the name? Uh, Lawrence. Lawrence. Uh -huh. And he's buying a print? Uh, I'm not sure. He, he, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, we'll get back to him, but congratulations, Lawrence. You have some really good taste. <laughs> I can say it. So far, of the top three, this is certainly my favorite. So uh, we'll get back to Lawrence and, um, and go from there and give the information before the end of the day. All right, let's look at number four. And number four, again, follows the lines of the first two. And I talked about that Mondrian and the pastels, but even more significant because the markers are even more prominent. Tell us about this one really quick, uh, Gabriel. What's the name? <clears throat> Let me see. Uh, i got to change that, Mike. That's the other one. Mike, that's when worlds collide. Oh, no, I see. Okay, you got it. Okay, wh what we call this one, Gabriel? Oh, that, well, uh, isn't that the one that we just uh, no, we no, put up? Look, no, this is number four. Look at the screen. I'm seeing the, okay. No, 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 now I see it. Um, this one, it was a little bit tough. Uh, I called it Complex Worlds. Complex World. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I like the, um, with like the triangles and. Yes. That's to say, this one even more dramatic of what I said to Mondrian with regard to the geometrical shapes embedded in, in the markers. And again, what is the size and the media? What do we have on this? It's, um, the paper's a little bit thicker on this one, but mm -hmm. it's a 12 by 9 inch. Okay, 9 by 12. Uh -huh. I'm asking 50. 50 again, okay. And it's called Complex World? Yes. All right. So again... Uh, that's one of those ones I'm calling Mondrian's uh, pastels with great border. Really like that one. Most prominent of the ones we've seen. All right, we're ready to move on to the next one. Now, once again, we got a pop of color. So, do you know which one we're seeing, uh, Gabriel? If you're gonna um, wa yeah, if you're gonna wait for the other thing, it's gonna be a delay. You don't have any order on the thing. That's what, remember we talked about keeping it in order, and you would know which one they are. I believe it's uh, Twisted Minds. All right, together. Twisted Minds. See all that all the great color with the center figures? I love that one. What's the, um, 
Well, um, this one, actually, this one was, uh, it was, uh, this one I called it Taking Over the World. It's kind of like the guy, he's uh, plotting on, like, uh, how to take, like, just, like, control everything. I got it. It's a great picture in the Senate. It's really a frustrated individual who, like you say, is having trouble deciding, reaching out to the different areas where he wants to take over. But great, great, yeah. great coloring on this. Now, again, tell us the size, media, and price on this. Um, it's a 12 by 9. Okay. And um, it's marker. I'm using uh, the Prisma colors to make those, and I'm asking 50. And it's on what? It's on paper? Yes. Okay, so there you go, folks. You can get an original here on paper of Complex World for $50, a 9 by 12 Or you can get it in on matte cardstock printed for 20 or 50 on canvas in, uh, again, the size 11 by 17 But again, this would be the original, so there's, there's your break right there is getting the original. All right, let's move on. And here's another one. Uh, wow. Just a second, Bob. Uh, someone had bought number four, Complex Worlds. Uh, Not the one we just saw, the one before that, the yeah, one I was talking Ah, okay. Four, uh, a guy named Greg. Brad? Greg. Greg. Oh, okay. Great. So he, so he's bought Complex World. Is that right? Correct. Excellent. So far, we're doing well. Doing well for you, Gabriel. All right. Let's see. Um, let's move on to the next one, please. Uh, all right. Which one we have, have now? Let's see. We've seen... Uh, Got a flaw set, so we see number five. All right, this is the other bright one, that, even brighter than this one here, which is really nice. This is number six, I guess. Can you tell us that? Number six. Yeah, it's called Twisted Minds Together, is what Mike is telling us. That one us. was uh, really fun, actually. I don't know. Um, I I kind of really like like the supernatural and all that. So uh huh. I like okay. two crazy people. Like around a pyramid, probably. I see. Pyramid being the center of it, I see it. Okay. And then the crazy pe the guy down at the bottom, really cool. And Great. maybe like the planets aligning like around it. Uh-huh. All right. Now, what is the, uh, again, the detail on this with regard to the media size and the uh, price? It's uh, 12 by 9 on a decent, like, it's, it's a little thick kind of paper. So it's a 12 by 9, and I'm asking 50. 50, okay. Uh, and the name on this one, again, is my, uh, Twisted Minds Together? Yes. Okay, excellent. Well, let's move on. So that's 9 by 12, but you can get it 11 by 17 if for 20 on paper, cardstock as a print, or $50 as well on canvas, but as a print. All right, let's move into another category. This is, I call this splatter art, but, I mean, don't take offense there. But it, it, I've seen a lot of artists who actually do splat uh, paint onto their canvas and then come out with masterpieces. Now, this one is called, from what Mike is telling, Circles in Motion Part 1. And I love that title. I think it's absolutely it's so appropriate uh, where you've got the actual circles around the borders as well as the center. And then again on a splatter of paint, huge colors, but also the white to integrate, to coordinate toward the circles. Tell us anything you want to tell us to add on that, please. Um, that one is, uh, that is actually a 24 by 18. So that's yeah. a big one, 18 by 24. And what, that's uh, an acrylic. That's an acrylic on canvas? Yes. Okay, and what's the asking on that? I was asking 175. 175. Well, there you go, folks. When there we're talking about an acrylic painting on canvas, huge size, 18 by 17. You said 18 by what? Um, that's a 24 by 18. 24 by 18. So very, very large canvas for 175 dollars. But again, if uh, if you'd rather have settle on the print, it's 20 dollars on matte card, 50 dollars on a print on canvas. Okay. And that one is remember the circles if. Uh, Circles in part one. All right. Let's go on to the next one. And here we go. This is another one, what I would call the splatter technique, uh, where the, uh, the cir where was the circles are much smaller and they're not really circles. And this is called circles in motion part two. That makes sense. Okay. So a derivative of the first one where the circles are not as pronounced and for the most part they're 
com they're no longer hollow, they're filled in circles. Anything else on this one? How is this one? Uh, how did you do this one on media? That one is actually a 20 by 16 inch. Wow, even bigger. It's acrylic also. Okay. Um, all of my paintings, after I finish them, they also have the final varnish as well, so it's got a little bit of a shine. Ah, okay. So you put a, a, some type of varnish to increase the shine on it. Okay. Yes. And what are we asking on this one since it's so large? Um, I'm asking 125 125 This one is less expensive than the previous one. Yeah, it's a little bit smaller. Oh, I thought it was larger. Okay, anyway. No, this one's, a, uh, this one's a 20 by 16. The previous was a 24 by 18. I got it. This is 16 by 20. I'm used to using the lower numbers first. 16 by 20, and the other one was 18 by 24. I got it. So 125 on canvas, acrylic. Once again, you can get it on 20 on the uh, uh, print in matte card or 50 on canvas. But again, it would be a print. Okay. Now, let's take it move on. We've got a few more before we... Uh, Take, uh, breaks coming down over. But again, we're going back. Now, this is more of a uh, what I call landscape or horizontal painting. Again, beautiful colors. Almost looks like uh, contemporary roses, but I know it's not that. Tell us what this one is, please. Beautiful colors. <clears throat> Mike tells us it's called Alien Maps. That one was uh, really fun. I actually watched a lot of like uh, X Files and. Like the, the paranormal shows, so I, okay. I kind of got, got it from that. It's actually a 16 by 20 acrylic on canvas. I got it. 16 by 20 acrylic on canvas. Beautiful. Alien, I, can, I can see the, I don't know if people can, the TV brings it just, but you can see almost that each one of those, certainly the orange ones have eyes, alien eyes, and also it's really, really for those sci fi fans, and I know we have a lot of them out there, not just watching us, but just in general. This would really be a great, but again, again, the color of the pop will be good on a wall, whether it's office or, or a home. So 16 by 20 acrylic, and what's the original going for? Uh, 125. 125 again, and 20 on, on printed paper as a print, and also uh, 50 on print as a canvas. Okay, I think this is, I'm not sure what number we're on, but I think we're getting near the end of our, at least halfway there, and I know break. So let's do one more. And again, we're back with the splatter technique. This time we're going when we did those circles. Let's see if we can. Uh, do you see which one we're talking about, Mike uh, Gabriel? It's got a lot of browns and blues and yellows on a beautiful background. Uh, it's called colorful circle curves. Colorful curves. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I know. All right, that one was really more of like. Um, I really like Jackson Pollock. Ah, uh, great influence. You can see, yeah, you can see the influence of Jackson Pollock. That, that what I call one of the really most well-known, I call them splatter artists, which may not be the right term, but a phenomenal artist. Go ahead. That one's, a, um, it's also on a 16 by 20. It's a little bit of a thicker canvas. So it's maybe like, uh, I want to say like two inches uh, deep. But... That one's going for 125. Wow. Now, are there multiple, are you using acrylics on this one? That one is all acrylics. And, um, I'm, you know, Pollock was famous for layering, you know, where he would, of course, I don't, I don't know if he used acrylics. I, I think he did, but I know he also used oil. So they would really get thick. Acrylics don't get as thick as, of course, oil does. But is it kind of layered? Is, does it have some dimension there? Um, I have a few pieces that are like that, but this one, no, this one's just, uh, I try to layer over on top and keep layering and I try to get as many layers as I can, but acrylic doesn't really. I understand. Yeah. It's hard with acrylic. I understand. But anyway, it certainly gives the, the depth without having it, you know, as it would be in a really a good one. Okay, folks. And that was 125 again, a bargain, 16 by 20 on canvas. Again, if you want it on print. On paper, good cardstock, bad cards, 20, 50 on a uh, canvas, again, uh, a print, though, and the original is 125. All right, Gabriel, it's time for our second break, so we'll pick it up uh, when we come back because we're about halfway through, and hopefully we'll get through them all so people can... Uh, Hey, uh, got a couple of sales. That's the oh, important Bob? thing. So let's enjoy our commercials. Bob, before we go to break, oh. just wanted to let you know that someone bought number six, uh, the 
Twisted Minds Together. Uh, which one was that again? Uh, number six. What was the name of it? Twisted Minds Together. Uh, Twisted Mi Twisted Minds Together. Ah, yeah. very good. Okay. A guy named Tom. Uh, Tom. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Gabriel thanks all three of the purchases so far, I'm sure. Uh, excellent. We're doing well. All right, let's go ahead and do our, our break and come back and take a look at the last half. Hopefully, we'll have a little, as much success on the other side. Listen up. Your customers, our listeners, could be hearing about your business right now. Yeah, right now. Don't miss out on the opportunity to advertise with NewOrleansTalkNetwork.com. Call our business department today at 504-475-4793 to hear about our great rates. NewOrleansTalkNetwork.com. We provide the people, you provide the business. Are you looking for a home to live stream your next event? Give us a call here at Bethesda Community Event Center, the only place on a golf course that can host and broadcast live your wedding reception, your baby shower, business seminar, and any other special event. Give us a call at 504-708-9454 for more details. Happy Merry Mondays. It's your girl, Mary J. I want you to tune in with me to Real Talk with Mary J on New Orleans Talk Network every Monday morning at 10 a.m. Then follow me to blogtalkradio.com slash Real Talk with Mary J at 10 p.m. It's going to be a Merry Monday every Monday at 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. You've just tuned in to New Orleans Talk Network. Hi, I'm Sheriff Joe Lapinto, and you are watching the New Orleans Talk Network. Welcome back to Artist Review. We're having fun with Gabriel Nunes of Plantation, Florida, looking at his contemporary work. Extremely affordable prices. He sold a few of us, a few of them so far, which is great. Uh, and again, we have not only the opportunity of getting uh, the original, which is so fabulous at an affordable price, but also we can do some prints for you for even real bar bargain basement. Okay, Gabriel, why don't we pick up where we left off? The next one, let's see if we uh, can follow this. Uh, let's see, if, uh, this is a a beautiful, again, all splatter, but it's not as so much splatter. It's got a gorgeous black background with golds and yellows and blues splattered on the front, but almost like musical notes. Uh, I'm trying to see if we have a name for it. Uh, 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 Halloween oh, coming. I, I put it more towards like Halloween. Yeah. Kind of like Halloween colors. Right, that's so, it. Halloween coming, that's it. Uh, I don't know. I've always kind of, uh, I really, really liked the, the, I don't know if you know, the Michael Meyer movies growing uh -huh. up. So kind of the colors, I don't know, and remind me a little bit of like that, that movie sort of. The new one can come out. I think it's coming out in September so they can see Jamie Lee Curtis and the new Michael yeah, movie. the original. But why do this one? And then you can have, uh, without Michael per se, you can have that same remembrance on your home or your office wall. All right, um, this is on canvas. What size and uh, what price and what acrylic, I guess, again? That's an acrylic 16 by 20. Mm -hmm. um, I'm asking 125. All right, it's kind of much your standard price so far. It's 16 by 20 is $125 on canvas. This one is truly great from Contemporary because it's not, some people say some of the splatted work, not his per se, but in general looks cluttered. Here you have a much more controlled, a lot more space. So it makes the colors really pop, especially being on the black background. That's Halloween coming. $20 if you want it on matte, frame, uh, matte stock, 50 on print on canvas, or 125 the original on canvas. Okay, let's move on because we don't have a lot of time. Again, back to the splatter technique. Uh, what do we have on this one, please? Can you see it? 
Uh, that one was called Rainbow Splash. Rainbows, okay. Um, I just like the uh, the idea of having like a lot of bright colors, something that pops out. This one, it's a little bit. I was able to layer it a little bit. Okay. As an acrylic, so it's a little bit thicker. It pops out a, a tiny bit, but it's also a twenty by sixteen. All right. I like the idea. If what I'm seeing is that the background is horizontal, kind of wider wider ranges of uh, paint done horizontally, whereas on, on the front is all basically vertical lines, but all very, very thin lines. So there's a contrast between the, the paint itself and also the colors and the way the direction they're going. So it's 16 by 20 on canvas. And what are we asking for that on the original? Asking 125. The 125, so I could have guessed. Again, $20 if you want cardstock. Fifty dollars if you'd like it on frame. Beautiful, beautiful. So that's a again an interesting. Now here's one. This one re really kind of reminds me of New Orleans style, almost like a, a bunch of saxophones. Great, great with a blue background. Tell us what what, what are we calling this and details on this one, please. Um, I was calling that one Colorful Life. Okay, Colorful Life. I can certainly see that. I don't. Know, I you know it's kind of funny that like you said like I, I do really like like jazz. Kind of music well, that, that I see sax almost like a sax in there and different a musical note up at the top left. Again, this is my vision, not necessarily, and I have bad eyes, but it really is a, a jazz kind of influence. But go ahead, elaborate. I mean, I was trying to like sort of like get like darker colors and mm -hmm. like mix them with like the really, really bright. So, like, uh, like the green that I have in it was able to pop out a little bit more. Yeah, um, I just really like the way the colors like fused and mixed. Yeah, they surely did. And I think that that bluish background or purple on the right side, along with the greens and the red, I mean, colors are really, like I said, almost Mardi Gras colors. So we, to me, it's a very New Orleans piece, even though it's not a New Orleans piece. Uh, and we said, we call it in a colorful life. It was 16 by 20 again, or a different size? Yes, no, that's a 16 by 20 on canvas. And that would be the 125 again? Yes. Okay, and then 20 for print on paper or 50 print on canvas. All right, moving on now. We, oh my goodness, this is great. Back to, this is very reminiscent of one of your earlier ones when we had the alien minds or something, the one you were discussing about the aliens, but it's much more uh, geometrically defined instead of that fluid shape. It's called, but it's called alien something. I guess like alien tribal, because I mean yes, I, I alien like tribe, whole... alien tribal. That is cool. Tell us a little bit I like about the this. Whole outer space, but I've always also been, uh, I've been a, like, uh, I've always been really intrigued with the, like Native American, like traditional. So I right. kind of tried to fuse those together. Uh huh. Well, I think you did a great job because it definitely does have that that look of being American Indian, but also aliens <laughs> at the same time, which hardly can 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 relate to. Colors are great. Uh, which size are we talking about here? Um, that one is a 16 by 20. Okay, and is it on canvas with acrylic or something yes, else? it's an acrylic on canvas with a final varnish. And the same 125? Yes. All right, and, and our usual print prices. All right, now this one is very unusual. It's it's almost like, um, I don't want to say blood dripping, but because it, it's in green, but it's like rain, some kind of raindrops on the front. It's like you're looking through a glass and you're seeing, I'm seeing beautiful, almost like like forest of trees, but done in all magnificent colors, layers. And it's called Hidden uh, hidden Aliens. One. It's so well hid, I don't see the aliens. But I just <laughs> love, I love the drippage, like icicles in on the front, which really is just really remarkable. Tell us about this one. It's really well done. Well, I mean, like, I, like I really like the whole aliens and outer space thing. So I kind of like did like it's a mountain, and like I was making a joke, like you know, like all the old videos where they had like aliens hidden in the background. Sure. And you could really see them. It's kind of like that idea that they're looking from afar, but you can't really okay. see them. Okay. Size and and median price. It's a 16 by 20, okay. and it's acrylic on canvas. I'm asking 125. 125. We got that. All right, let's move on because we're running short of time. Now, this one is really, this is great. When I talked about something being really congested, it's a splatter art, but there's so much going on. I mean, there's no 
There's no spatial activity. It's just like a filled, filled canvas of colors, but a lot of unification of the colors, and it's called Hectic Mind. There we go. Tell us about this one. Um, that one is also a 16 by 20. That one is very uh, Jackson Pollock inspired. It's acrylic on canvas. I just wanted to try to get as many colors as I could on it. Sure. Uh, Okay. I'm asking 125 for that one. All right. Excellent. So that's another one. Hopefully, a lot of yours have similar names. So I'm hoping people get these. So please pay attention when you're watching. If you're intending to buy something, that makes sure you do get the right, the right piece by getting the right name. Because a lot of them have alien or mind inside the title. Anyway, here's the next one, which I love as well. Because once again, you're bringing the geometrical circles and big, bold, black markers. And just perfectly centering them in the in the uh, in the whole framework. Tell us about this one. That one's actually <coughs> all acrylic. That's a nine by twelve. I was able to do. Um, uh, I use like these little circular things to make the circles in the middle, but it's all acrylic. Well, it's called uh, universal, and I, I I just think it's perfect because it does almost look like uh, the whole nebula up at the top or in the back, and then they have not necessarily planets, but very, very interesting. So this is uh, your standard size again? Yes, it's uh, that's a, six, a 16 by 20. And 125 as well as ours. Okay, let's move yes. on. Now this is one of my favorites of what I still in that category call splatter. The colors here are so different from all the rest of stuff. There's not enough definite, there's not as much definition except for uh, the dots, follow the dots on the front, which again looks superimposed on the on the painting, and it's called glaciers. And I, oh my goodness, this is so accurate because the back, I mean, yeah, the back. Really, uh, with, go ahead. With me and my friends, it always reminds of uh, us of like, uh, I guess like Antarctica, or like that area. It certainly is that with the huge glaciers in the back, but just done in magnificent colors of purples and blues and pinks as well as the white. But then having the fabulous X marks the spot done with black uh, markers or whatever in the dots, just, it's just really a, a point of interest that is really remarkable. And so this one is called Universal. Truly different than I think any of the others that we've seen other than the technique. From a color standpoint, I think it's the most unique one. <coughs> so No, this is called Glaciers. I'm sorry, the other one was... And again, is this your standard size? Yeah, 16 by 20. Okay, and again, that can be 125 for your original, or you can get it, folks, on cardstock, Matt, for $20. Can you believe that? Or 50 if you even want it on canvas as a print. So really good one. Glaciers, I think, can go with any age group and just really anywhere. The color is just so apropos. Now, here's another one where the colors are much more different, and there's this heavy, heavy splatter. But with a green background, which I haven't seen you use much at all, so it really, and then specific colors of orange and white and all, they really pop out. And this one is called a crazy forest. Wow, the green, you got it. It's like an overview of the tops of the trees. There's definitely no doubt about that. Tell us a little bit about this one. Yeah, it was basically like just trying to break up a forest, make it more abstract than anything. So it was just like a jungle. It's a 16 by 20. Okay. Acrylic. Okay. Um, Going for your usual 125 or different? All yeah, right. that's all 125. All right. Uh, the crazy forest. Again, you can have it for 20 or 50, depending on if you want to print or not. And I think this is last but least, and then we're going to wrap it up and uh, tell the people again how to, to buy if they're interested after the show. All right, this is the last one, which I think is a real good culmination of, of the work of the series that you're giving us today. Tell us about this one. Um. That one, I actually dark, really like Dark that. Matter, again, uh, what a great title. Another one of these uh, space or alien titles. Dark Matter. Tell us about Dark Matter. Um, dark Matter, it, I just got it more from always watching space documentaries and being really infatuated. Like, I just really like the whole NASA. And, like, I'm a big fan of Nikola Tesla. So, like, I always really liked all of, like, uh, anything that has to do with, like, stars and space. Well, um, I think that's actually a, a 16 by 20 as well. Okay. And your standard pricing? It's a 125. All right. Excellent. Well, folks, uh, we've got, well, we got about five to ten minutes left on the show, so great. 
Uh, anything else you want to tell us about uh, your city? Any other places that if someone doesn't uh, revisit our show, because of course our show can be called up on Bob's playlist anytime 24-7 or some of the replays during the week. But if somebody else, uh, is there any other place they can find you to see some of these pieces and some of the others? Because you're all very prolific. This is really just a drop in the bucket of the amount of work that I've seen him do, especially in this short period of time. So where else could uh, people uh, go to see him other than literally uh, physically? Where else online could they find you? Um, I am on, I'm on Instagram. Okay. You and could, what, um, search my name and I it should pop up. Okay. It's under Gabriel Nunez. Yes. Uh, it's G-A-B-R-I-E-L-N-U-N-E-Z, right? Yes. And that would be on Instagram. Is that right? Yes. And same thing for Facebook. If you type my name in, I, I should pop up. There's a, there's a photo with me with a lot of paintings in the background. Okay. Okay, now, I, I also know that you call your art, I, I, don't, I, know, I don't think you have a studio per se yet, except for your home, but uh, you call your art Zen, Zen Lighten, which is a great name. Uh, is there anything under that name online as well, or is it everything, what we said, better look under your name? At the moment, no, I'm, uh, I'm working I'm, on creating my logo. No problem. That's what I have uh, um, yeah. for now. No problem. So, so if you want to... So if you want to see more, and, uh, and there's also information how they can contact you on those two sites. Is that right? Yeah, they can message me directly. I don't, uh, everything's public. Okay. So that's uh, Gabriel Nunez on either Instagram or Facebook, folks. Uh, I found him on Facebook, and then I couldn't believe the amount of work he had. So if you want to see a lot more and uh, uh, all different variations of what we've seen today, that's the way to go, like Instagram or Facebook. All right, hey, uh, we want to thank Gabriel very much. Uh, hey. I think we've got Bob? a few sales for him, which is uh, very good for him as well. Oh, Bob, you hear me? Oh, okay, yes. Yeah, uh, we saw another one. Uh, 18, another one? Which one uh, is glaciers? this? Glaciers. I'm sorry? We saw Glaciers. Oh, the one I was raving about, the Glaciers. Yeah, uh-huh. Wow, oh, and who bought that one? Uh, a guy named Paul. Paul. Okay, wow. So I think we sold like four of yes. That's not a record, but at the same time, it's not bad. Um, what we'll do is, again, folks, let's go over the... In case you either rewatch this show or want to order anything later from us of these ones that we've talked about, <clears throat> all you have to do is do one of three things. One, um, the best way is to... Bob Bockelman, B-O-E-C-K-E-L-M-A-N. You can find me on Facebook or... Email me at bob at rreview.net. Remember, we had to change it to .net because someone stole my email address. Bob at rreview.net. So you just need information. You can go those two ways. But if you actually want to purchase and you can remember the name, then you want to go ahead of the piece. Then you can tell us three things. What do you want to tell us? What format? The name of the piece. Okay. Which format do you want? Do you want... Do you want to get? Do you want the original? Of course, and we'll put you in touch directly with the artist so you can work out those details on some of his great originals. Or if you want a print, you'll stay with us and tell us whether you want the twenty-dollar mat uh, stock, fifty-dollar on frame, uh, fifty-dollar excuse me on canvas print, or the hundred-dollar framed canvas print. All right. Then you can pay for it either by sending us a personal check, a cashier's check to eighteen thirty Jenna. New Orleans 70115, care of my attention and paid out mailable to me, or on PayPal under my name, okay? So you can do this anytime after the show. Should you come to mind and you rewatch it or whatever, or you find something online, you can either, if you want an original, communicate directly to Gabriel. If you want one of the prints that you've seen on the show, contact me through what we've just talked about. Anything else you want to tell us, Gabriel, before we go? Um, just hope everybody has a great day. Well, have a great rest of the week. I think you've helped make it a great, a great day. By uh, it's nice to wake up to something pretty and uh, exciting and vibrant. You're giving us a lot of motivation, etc., to to make Wednesday a good day. So we thank you for coming on, and I'm gonna tell the audience goodbye about next week. And uh, so we'll be in touch soon. And uh, thank you again for coming on. Okay, thank folks. You. As we mentioned, that we're doing a, and I did a little announcement in case you saw it on Facebook a, while, a week ago. We're doing a double take. In other words, we're doing back to back artist reviews. Uh, we see the great work of contemporary artist Gabriel Nunes today out of Plantation, Florida. 
but we're bringing it back home next week. Next Wednesday at 8 a.m. Uh, New Orleans Central Time, uh, we're going to be looking at Maurice Hick, Hicks, H-I-C-K-S. Uh, he, his name of his art company is Mo, M-O, Mo Art, which is great. He does a lot of work with regard to New Orleans musicians. So this is going to really hit home. We've had a couple of others in some of the previous artists where they've dabbled, whether it's the Shotgun Homes, whether it's uh, Streetcars, the little aspects of New Orleans. But this is focused strictly on the music of New Orleans. So um, what's great about it is you're getting double back-to-back -back shows, uh, two diff totally different artists. Next week's the local artist, so we want you to watch Artist Review next week, uh, Maurice Hicks, and we'll see all of his work. Uh, the final week of August, which is, uh, unfortunately, I believe, uh, Katrina's Day, not sure what we're doing. Uh, usually I take off, and I'm not able to take a vacation this year, but that's what we're using to trace to try and go in nice, pretty, warm, cool uh, island water, so it would make us feel better than the horrible retreat. We certainly don't want to keep bringing up more memories of Katrina. So we're not sure what we're doing on the Lanyap fifth Wednesday of, of the month right now, but we um, know your nonprofit, which would normally be next week, may be going through an evolution, just like a lot of these. You know, in Bob's, Bob's uh, Variety Hour, we like to keep it interesting. We like to keep bringing you new things, variations of old things. So um, stay tuned. Watch us next week. And then we'll also next week tell you what we're going to do at the end of the month. Thanks again for following us, and thank you all for buying. Uh, makes the artists feel good, and it certainly makes us feel good here at New Orleans Talk Network that you're interested in some of the things we're doing. Okay, have a good week.